Sam, how do you respond to the uh, suggestion that your party, comparatively on two, has simply shown itself over the last two or three years to be more deeply corrupt than the other two? I'm sorry, I, I think that uh, whilst our MPs uh, were uh, called for bogus claims in the, elect uh, the expenses scandal, I think that it's simply wrong to say that we were the most corrupt party. We were equally as bad as uh, the other parties, but we are doing something about it. We're deselecting a lot of MPs, lots of standing down, and we're excited to announce the, uh, the standing of a lot of new, young, uh, previously uninterested uh, MPs in politics. And we're also uh, the party who want to do something about the expenses. We see we're the ones who have commissioned the report and we're the ones who are going to introduce measures to make sure that it doesn't happen again and to uh, restore the uh, confidence from the British people in MPs. It was your leader who chose to serve in his cabinet, Stephen Byers, Jeff Hood, Patricia Hewitt, who, after the expenses scandal, but before the election, appeared quite ready uh, to accept payment uh, for uh, exerting uh, political uh, influence. What does it say about your leader that um, he's put his faith in people who behave in a fashion which many voters would regard as nauseating? Quite frankly, what uh, Jeff Hoon and Patricia Hewitt, Hewitt did, among others, was absolutely disgraceful. I don't think it's any uh, reflection on our leader to say that uh, he couldn't keep control or put faith in, in these people. But it's simply wrong and the Labour Party will not tolerate this sort of behaviour. It's disgraceful and this party wants to do something about it and make sure that nothing of the kind happens again. One of your previous leaders said that the Labour Party is a moral crusade or it's nothing. When you look at um, Byers and Hood, it looks like nothing. So I think these are two um, minority cases and in reality we are the party committed to pro uh, providing a future fair for all and it's not the case that a majority of MPs have done it. Those who have done it will just not be tolerated, deselected and not invited into the next government or opposition government. Okay, so let's turn to your um, economic policy. Quite simply, you're going to sit into this mess. Why should we trust you to get it, get us out of it? I'm sorry, this recession was worldwide. It wasn't caused by um, any Labour government at all. It was a worldwide recession. Uh, the banking system, uh, which has now uh, been, been reformed, uh, was partly to blame. But this party is going to provide relentless value for money. We're going to get, we're going to get us out of this mess. We're not going to cut public spending like the Tories, or we haven't let the recession run its course like the Tories did in the 1980s and 90s. And we are the government of action, and we're the government to take this government, this country forward and out of the recession. So if you're not going to cut taxes, I think that's not uh, you said. Also, oh, you're not going to cut public spending. Uh, that's what you said. Um, does that mean that you're going to eliminate the budget deficit, which everyone has agreed has to be done, uh, if it's not going to be done by, tax, uh, by um, spending cuts, is it going to be done entirely by tax increases? Not entirely. First of all, the, the, um, the cut in public spending cannot come this year. The, the recovery in it is in its infancy, and quite frankly, uh, cutting public spending at this stage in 2010 will be frankly disastrous. Yes, we are going to raise taxes. We're going to raise uh, taxes on people earning over £100,000. That's just 2% of earners. And we're going to protect families. We're going to make sure that there's adequate childcare, adequate education. So actually, whilst there is going to be tax increases, it's going to be for the minority of wealthiest earners in the country. Uh, and for the, minor for the majority of voters, it's not going to have any effect whatsoever. So you seem to be suggesting that uh mass of the British people over the next five years uh, are going to be completely unscathed. There's going to be no reduction in their standard of living, there's going to be no pay, no hardship, is that credible? That's it. I think that is credible and both um, possible as well. We're going to cut back costs, obviously, in the bureaucracy, We're going to get rid of unnecessary quangos, 
and reduce consultancy fees and, and market from market expenditure. We're going to make sure that it is only the wealthiest uh, people who get taxed heavily, and the ordinary voters are going to enjoy um, improved education, a continuing commitment to the NHS. After all, our party has been the great pioneers of the health service, and we're going to make sure that ordinary voters do still enjoy the high standard of living um, and uh, public services that they that they have done in the past. So actually, I don't think it's right to say uh, that they're not that um, it's ordinary voters who are going to uh, suffer because, quite frankly, sir, it's not. The other two parties as well have promised that they can uh, bring Britain um, out of a recession. They can eliminate the budget deficit by cutting waste, and that's all they suggest sometimes needs to be done. Now voters may be unconvinced by that. But aren't you in a different position in that you have had 13 years in office to cut waste and yet you're still saying there is waste there to be cut? Doesn't that mean that your government over the last 13 years has been incompetent? It's true to say that the government has not been refined as much as it should have but this recession has been a wake-up call across the whole country, in fact, across the whole world. We have to cut costs. We're now in a position that if we don't cut costs, we've got to cut services for the people who we are committed to representing. So I don't think that it's, it's fair to say that, that in 13 years we should have cut it more because we were enjoying such unprecedented growth in the economy that it wasn't such an issue. But now we've had a wake-up call and we are going to refine the government system. The Conservative Party has been highly critical of your um, increase in national health contributions, which it calls a jobs tax. Aren't you impairing the recovery by increasing those contributions? I think that, first of all, the contribution that an ordinary voter is going to make is, is, is small. And also, we have to raise taxes somewhere. We've got to um, cut this deficit of £167 billion. Pounds. This, this tax is something so so minor. I know the other parties, the Tories and the Liberal Democrats, have made a big thing of it. But I think in reality, it's, they've made the whole big thing of nothing. We've, we're going to use the money you know, to improve public services, um, to make sure that the economy carries on to recover. And seeing as the Tories are, would increase taxes a lot more than, than we would, I think that they can't criticise one, one scheme to to um, increase taxes. Turning to your um, education policy, I looked at your manifesto on the issue of education and what it seemed to add up to was one-to-one -one tuition, it would be very expensive to provide, to merge good schools with bad schools in the hope that good schools would somehow emerge. And then promises, promises us that there will be, quote, zero tolerance of bad behaviour, unquote. Is there very much there that uh, voters should take seriously? I think they should. This one-to-one -one promise, this is a genuine promise that we've looked into, done our research, and it can work. By the time pupils come to seven, there, there are a lot of people who can read and write and do maths in, you know, very confidently. There are, there are those who simply can't. One-to-one -to -one, one -to -one tuition will bring up our education standards, it will make sure that everyone has got equal opportunities before they reach junior school and uh, secondary school. And it, I think it will work because we do need to bring up the standards and if we're going to compete on the world stage, that just has to be done. And whilst it will be expensive, the fact that uh, everyone will end up leaving school with the minimum level of education means that in the long term it's going to pay for itself. If you're so committed to improving education opportunity. Why did you introduce tuition fees in universities? Tuition fees at university are um, completely necessary. We can't get through 392,000 more pupils than in 1997 uh, than um, in 2010. And quite frankly, pupils are going to have to pay for, pay for a minimum standard, a minimum level of tuition fees but they're going to get this back. We're going to make sure that taxes remain as low as possible. We're going to make sure that job, jobs are freely available. Our high-tech green economy, which we, we are committed to, um, to, to um, 
investing in means that in the long term it's going to be uh, worth it and they're going to get every penny of it back.